Good morning, everyone. High Mileage Rider here. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, 6 o'clock. We had a little bit of rain last night, but it's burned off. A little bit of fog this morning. A little bit of smoke as well from all the forest fires in BC. A perfect day for a motorcycle adventure. Let's have a look at our cast for the day. We'll just move the camera. This is my 2014 V-Storm 1000 ABS. All kitted out, ready to go. The biggest change you may notice on my bike is I have switched to the Kappa 37 liter side cases instead of the stock Suzuki side cases. These are just a little bit bigger, a little more robust. And as everyone who knows me knows I like to bring the kitchen sink, a TIG welder, maybe even a microwave on a motorcycle trip. I overpack. Today we're going to be leaving from Edmonton, meeting my buddy Ken in Kalispell, Montana. Going to ride, I believe it's called the Sea to Sky Highway. And then we're going to head back into BC and do some riding in the interior BC, the cusp, Ainsworth, do a couple ferry rides, hit a couple hot springs, eat some amazing food, share some amazing laughs. Come with us. Okay, regulators, let's ride. Well, here we are leaving Edmonton. And as you can see, it's just a little bit smoky out there. The first part of our trip today is going to be on the Super Slab Highway 2. Also called the QE2. Just because we're going to make some time heading down to Kalispell, Montana. According to good old Google Maps, Kalispell, Montana is approximately 730 kilometers. So, you know, a nice relaxing day of riding. And you know what? Traffic is actually moving along quite nicely. I don't want to jinx myself, but... Every other time I've been coming through Calgary, I've ended up uh, stuck in the parking lot known as the Deerfoot, but this is uh, really good. Okay, so here we are coming to Cardston, the last town before the border at Cartup. This time I'll remember to turn off the camera as I'm going through the crossing. See you on the other side. Okay, successfully through the border crossing. No strip searches, no tasering. And next towns, Bab, Browning, and Great Falls. 171 miles. One nice thing about having the GPS on my uh, dash is it will automatically convert miles to kilometers an hour. Oh, I think I definitely need a picture here. Welcome to Montana. So I just stopped and uh, chatted with some uh, people who had also come down from inside the states to ride Glacier Park and the Sea to Sky Highway and apparently it's closed. You can get as far as the top with the visitor center and then it is closed because of the forest fires and smoke. Figures. <laughs> I don't think Ken will be too happy about that, but we'll make it work. They also warned me to watch out for uh, 
animals on the highway, lots of cows and bulls and sheep and whatever the heck else. So we'll keep our eyes open. Should make for some good pictures. So this is the town of Browning. And according to directions, this road should be open. So we're going to go up here to the first set of lights and turn right. Then we'll keep going straight and at the first roundabout we'll take the third exit to the left. And that should keep us on 484-ish or Highway 2. So this is part of the Lewis and Clark National Forest. Beautiful twisty roads. The roads aren't in very good shape unfortunately. But uh, they're nice and twisty. About 75 miles from Kalispell. So this is the town of Hungry Horse. Just coming out of Hungry Horse. Beautiful river, little river on the side. There were some people back there fishing. Zip line. If only I had time to stop. But gotta meet Ken in Kalispell. Wow, I guess Jesus is coming. Whitefish, the town of Whitefish. Cool airport. Glacier Park International Airport. So this is my last town, Glacier Park, before Kalispell, which is I believe only about 10 kilometers away. And look, the locals are parading me to the hotel. Well, as you may notice, this fine morning, it's not just me on the road. We've got Ken here from British Columbia, Kelowna. We're just leaving Kalispell. Unfortunately, the, the highway, the sea, the sky, or whatever it's called highway, uh, is not fully open. And the section we want to ride is closed because of the forest fires. So, no worries, we're on vacation. We're just going to pick another route. We're going to go out through, I believe it's East Glacier uh, Roadway. We're going to go up through uh, Browning and St. Mary's and uh, get back into Canada. That's a cool old car. And see if we can get into uh, Cranbrook. It says that the highways are still open, although Cranbrook is still under evacuation alert. Uh, it'll be a good day. We'll see you on the road. Huckleberry Land. Huge gift store, huckleberries, and apparently amazing huckleberry pie.
Let's get a view again this fine morning. He looks comfy with his fancy new Canada flag bandana. So this is West Glacier, or heading to West Glacier, I should say. Next town will be Hungry Horse, and here's where Jesus Christ will save us. More importantly, I wanted you to see the mountain, the sun, and how smoky it still is. And here's the Montana Vortex House of Mystery and the zip lines again. <laughs> Helicopter rides. Whitewater rafting. Scooter and bicycle rentals. More whitewater rafting. Or if you need a taco or burrito. This is a really cool monument. I'm not sure what it is. But let's have a look. My god, this beast room has power. No downshifting required. Just roll on the throttle and you're suddenly a little bit over the posted speed limit in order to pass. So this is Glacier Park National Lodge. Pretty cool little uh, vehicles for their guided tours. There's some livestock on the road. <laughs> Could have had steaks for supper. Some more twisties. Here we are back in Canada. So the plan is we're going to take this road, Highway 2, up to 5, turn left on 5, and meander our way hopefully up to Cranbrook in BC. As I said before, they've had forest fires around there, so we'll have to see if it's still open. According to the news, it was open this morning. is now Highway 5 on our way to Cranbrook.
right slide. So this is the town of Cowley on Highway 3 after Pincher Creek. And you can see all of the wind turbines, even through the smoke. Well, here we are Monday morning, it would be day three, on our We Don't Know Where We're Going tour. We are leaving, sorry, Fernie, British Columbia, on Highway 3, and the destination today is back to Kelowna. 30% chance of thunder showers, so we're going to try and get to Cranbrook, we'll have breakfast there. And hopefully once we get Pranbrook, we will have outrun the chance of rain. Uh, it's a really nice morning. Uh, still obviously smoky because of the forest fires. But uh, the old bike says it's 16 degrees. It'll be a great day. The beautiful roads of the interior of BC. We just don't get roads like this in Alberta. Imagine being able to use all the sides of your tire. Let's get a picture of Ken this morning. After his three cups of coffee. Looking good. So this is the town of Jaffrey. And the town before was Eldon. Nice golf course. And here we come into the town of Cranbrook which is where we're going to have some breakfast. Really nice ride into Cranbrook this morning. Nice little sweepers. It's windy. It's just the right temperature to wear all your gear and not get hot. So, back in our construction, We've probably gone about 10 kilometers since outside of Yak. Now we're going over the Goat River. On our way to Creston, which I think is only about 10 kilometers away. But you know, a bad day in construction delays is better than any day at work. And this is us coming off the ferry at Belfort. Took us forever to get on the ferry and then it took about 10 seconds to come off the ferry.
beautiful twisty roads. Absolutely beautiful twisty roads here. I think I might have that wear strip close to the edge of the tire by now. This bike was made for the twisties. Actually, it was made for everything. So now we're coming into the city of Nelson. Really cool bridge. Coming over another bridge going into Castlegar. As I said, very, very smoky because of the forest fires. I think we're going to stop here and get some gas. This is the town of Greenwood. Here we are, taking off from Ken's place. Gonna go to a motorcycle store, go figure, called Open Road. Then we're gonna go visit his dad. And then we're gonna go to Concord Motorcycles, because Ken's looking for a new lid. And then, who knows? Who knows where we will end up? First stop of the day, open road, bike gear and accessories. Inside of the open road. I smell leather. So while we were in open road motorcycles, I got myself a new set of mid-weight gloves to replace my gloves from 2007 uh, that finally had the thumbs wearing through. I guess 12 years is pretty good to get out of a pair of gloves. And they were on sale for only $33. Gotta like it. So now we're off to visit Ken's dad. And then back to the motorcycle porn. I mean uh, shopping, yeah, motorcycle shopping. So here we are coming up to Concor Motorcycles, or Concur, which is right beside the second Gasoline Alley Harley-Davidson. And if you haven't figured out from the sounds, Ken rides a Harley. Conquer Motorcycles. They specialize in customizing Harleys, but they also customize other bikes. Oh, 
here we are coming into Vernon, going by the Vernon military camp. That square on your left, I used to parade around when I was younger in Army Cadets in the marching band. A view from the top of East Side Road. bit of construction going on East Side Road. But that's okay. Oh, beautiful view. few logs waiting to go to market. There's the bridge that goes back into Kelowna. So Ken and I are going to do a day trip out to Kamloops, but first we're stopping at the Jammery for lunch. I'm told it is the place to eat. So we just left the Jammery and uh, had an amazing uh, breakfast meal called the Breakfast Palella. Uh, seafood, lots of lobster, crab, scallops mixed in a uh, amazing buttery smooth uh, hollandaise sauce. Mm. I just hope I can stay awake now for the ride down to Kamloops. Some of the views coming out of Kelowna. So I think this is the town of Falkland. to the pub. And now we're coming through Monty Lake on our way to Kamloops. Here we are in Kamloops. Oh, and the train going by the other way. So we just finished a visit with uh, Anders and Nadine in Kamloops. And now we're heading back to Kelowna on some nice windy back roads. Absolutely gorgeous. More beautiful roads and lake. Coming into Kelowna, not exactly sure how far away we are. But it does look like the smog is picking up over the last couple days.
There's our turn to Kelowna. And I'll be coming back this way when I head home. So we're uh, about 80k from Kelowna, and we're we took the Coquihalla over from Kamloops, and now we're on uh, 97C. And you could see just how bad the smoke is. whole bunch of smaller forest fires burning. I think they Ken told me there was like five or six. And here we are back in Kelowna. Specifically West Kelowna. This is official documentation to show that Ken has Gucci-ized Gucci -ized his bike with a camera. Next stop, cup holder. It's just then to a verify sheepskin. that Daryl is actually driving like a man instead of a pussy. <laughs> that is true. Here we are getting ready to head out for another day ride. We're going to do some lake road twisty up at high elevation. Should be awesome. So here we are heading up to wherever we're going today, a mountain pass we're going to climb over so we've worn our woolies to stay warm. The Beestrom's running like a champ, no problems at all. Loves the twisty roads, loves the open flat road, just going for miles. The only thing I could say I'd really like is a cruise control. but. That's neither here nor there. This is the connector going to Merritt from Kelowna. And the speed up here is now 120 kilometers an hour. So most people going like 10-ish over or so are like 130, 140. The meek not apply. The wind must have changed yesterday because the smoke really blew in. There was a lot of ash in town. Uh, a lot of smoke. Same with this morning. It'd be interesting to change the air cleaner when I get home and see, uh, see how dirty it is from all this smoke and ash. Where did Ken go? Ken went on the gravel! Ken has an adventure bike. Right turn? Yeah. That's the corner where the first time I wiped up my Yamaha. <laughs> that corner. Oh really? Oh yeah. I came around it too hot and I was yeah. in the uh, in like the left hand driving portion. Yeah. Came around too hot, more big spot, threw me up, and I went over and I rolled the guardrail. <laughs> So this is Spence's Bridge. And this is the inn at Spence's Bridge. So unfortunately the inn at Spence's Bridge was not open. Uh, apparently it was originally built in 1813 or something, or 1913 makes more sense. And uh, was owned by a bunch of hairy Krishnas. And this fellow we just met uh, has bought it and he's renovating it. He wants to make it like a museum piece with a hotel.
So that'll be really cool when it's done. So our next stop will be Ashcroft for some lunch. And here we are coming to the Ashcroft Bakery. Nice. Horsey's on the road. And a little pony or a foal. More wild horses. So here we are on day 10, after a number of days in Kelowna visiting with uh, Ken's dad and family, it's been wonderful. We now have to head back to good old Edmonton. So this morning, it is a little bit chilly, it's like plus 5 or plus 7, which is probably really chilly for Kelowna in August. As you can see, there's rain there. We had rain all night, but we're not going that direction. We're hopefully going over there where the sun is. We're gonna take the Vernon Way to Kamloops. Ken's gonna come with me for a little ride, and then I'll be on my own from Kamloops. I never tire of riding over this bridge. It's so cool. Kelowna to Edmonton is about I think it's 950 kilometers. So I'm taking off here at 8 a.m. Edmonton time, 7 a.m. here. So I should probably get home around 8 or 9 p.m. Nice relaxing day of riding. We'll see you on the highway. So here we are. Uh about 60k from Kamloops, the next couple towns are going to be Monty Creek and Monty Lake. It is an absolutely gorgeous day. Sunny, relatively warm, but clear. The smoke has been blown away by the prevailing winds. And here we are coming up to Kamloops. This is where Ken and I are going to part ways. He's going to head back to Kelowna, go visit his dad, and I'm going to keep to the right, if you like, and uh, head back home. It's been a great trip with Ken. Got in as much riding as we could, given the circumstances. And I look forward to our next uh, next trip. Here's our turn, five north, Sun Peaks and Jasper. Okay, so just parted ways with Ken. He's gonna head back to uh, Kamloops and I'll be going back to Edmonton through the next big towns will be Barrie and Clearwater 
and Jasper, 436 kilometers away. So we'll call that about four hours. We'll probably have lunch then. So this is the town of Barrie. So now we're coming into the town of Blue River. We're going to pull over in Blue River and have some lunch and a little stretch, get some gas, and then we'll be on the road. So I'm leaving uh, Blue River. Next town will be Valemont. I believe it's in about 90k. Probably be some smaller towns in between, but I honestly don't remember them. Traffic is good. It's uh, quite light. Uh, lots of motorcycles out, which is kind of cool. It's a beautiful day to ride. It's warmed up to about 16 degrees. So you can wear all the gear and not get too hot. This is the town of Valemont. Nice town. Uh, beautiful day today so you can see all the mountains around them. Well, here is where, uh, coming out of Valemont, we meet up the jun with the junction of uh, Highway 5 and 16. 5 will take you on to McBride and Prince George. And uh, 16 West will take us to Jasper. And then eventually back to Edmonton. So now we're coming into Mount Robson Park. It's absolutely breathtaking. Look at all the snow up there on the peak of the mountains. For years, since about the year 2000, 2001, whenever we've driven to Penticton, Kelowna, or Kamloops with our boys, we've always stopped at this roadside turnout to get a picture of them. And we've always tried to get the picture taken exactly the same way as the previous year to show how much they've grown. Absolutely gorgeous here. And I believe this is called Moose Lake. Well, we just left the BC border. And here we are, back in Alberta. Should be about four and a half to five hours away from Edmonton, depending on how many pictures I take. More of Jasper, the Via Rail Canada Centre. This is the amazing scenery as you leave Jasper. Must be civilization, they have a Walmart. It's 
So I've had police in front of me or right behind me ever since Jasper all the way to Edmonton and now look what just passes me or was behind me the special tactical operations of the RCMP <laughs> I guess they knew I like to speed a little bit on this new bike and while we're chatting about the bike I tell you this 2014 V-Strom is an amazing freaking bike it does absolutely everything really, really well. I've been so impressed. It carves the twisties like a sport bike. You could go off-road like any other off-road bike. Incredibly comfortable today. I'm going to be riding a thousand, just under a thousand kilometers, like 990. In perfect comfort. I feel fresh as a daisy. I could do another thousand. If it wasn't for the fact that my wife didn't find it that comfortable as a passenger, then I don't think I would uh, need to change bikes. This could have been or could be my retirement bike. We'll see what happens. Welcome to Edmonton. We are back, and it looks like, according to my GPS, we will be back by 7.38 at my doorstep. So we'll just have to do a final tally of the kilometers and see what it turns out to be. Okay, everybody, well, I finally made it back to my end of town, even though I had to go north to go south. Thank goodness for the adventure bike. By my rough math, today's ride was 1,020 kilometers, and it took 11 and a half hours, with stops for gas and pee and food. That's not too bad. This is the last trip I am doing for 2018. I hope to get it posted in the fall because I have a couple of other trips to post as well. I hope you enjoyed everything that we did in 2018. And we'll see you with bells on for 2019. Take care.